Hi, this is another episode of Christina Lee Dot Meditation AU. I'm Christina Lee, and today we're going to be doing a tutorial on this piece. It's called Crocus. I also want to invite you guys to subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell. I also invite you guys to check out my Patreon page. I link that below and you will be able to get this video commercial free. This piece is part of the color challenge I'm running for January 2021 and you can check the link below in my Facebook group where I will be posting about this piece if you want to find out more information and join us there. It's a fabulous group where you can go and share all of your projects. Onto the tools. To prep your canvas or your record, you're going to want to make sure it's thoroughly clean, so washing it with soap and water. I like to do batches of records, so I have them on hand when I want to use one. So I'll do like five or 10 at a time, but you're gonna wash them, make sure they're really dry. You're gonna leave the label on it, and you don't need to soak it or take it off. And you're gonna take this Rust-Oleum, it's a flat black. It's meant to go on plastic or really any surface to prepare it. It's just like a primer. It's going to help hold the paint to the record. And the cool thing is, is you can actually see the groove still through this primer. I know when you paint primer on, sometimes it kind of hides those grooves and I really like the texture of those grooves. It gives it the personality of the record still. Once you've primed your record, you're gonna need a stencil. I got these stencils off of Amazon. I don't know if you can find the same size. This is a 10 by 10. I think you can find eight by eight now on Amazon, but you can also find these on Etsy. The particular stencil I'm using for this piece is the 16 segment. And if you don't have the stencil, you can go ahead and use um, a ruler and a compass or basically just a ruler and draw out the guidelines and you're gonna mark every half inch. That's how often these uh, circles are. This particular project, I'm going to be using all Arteza metallic paints. These are my favorite paints of all time and I absolutely love them. I love the texture, I love playing with them. You can do things with these paints that you really can't do with other brands. And I know there's a lot of you out there who want to do dot mandala painting with this paint, but you're not quite sure how to get the right texture of the paint. So we're gonna go through all of that today. Because the metallics are a really heavy body paint, you're gonna to wanna to mix them. And so you can get these cute little containers. They have a little snap on top. And this is the perfect little storage container for these paints. You can put them in here, put your pouring medium, and they'll store really well for at least a week. So while you're working on your project, you won't have to worry about it drying out. Let's talk about pouring mediums. My personal favorite is the Liquitex pouring medium, and I will put a link below for the Liquitex. The next thing you're going to need is some sort of way to mark your grid. And so what I personally use as my favorite is these watercolor pencils by Crayola. They're super easy to erase, and the way I actually lay that out on the record I don't have to erase them because I paint over them. So this is a really great resource. I know some people like to use chalk pencils. I've just found them really difficult to erase. So that's what I personally like to use. The next tool I like to use is this micro dotter. It's what I call it. It's actually an embossing tool for sewing, but it is a Pergamano 0.5. I think it's millimeters and it's got a super fine tip on it. So this is perfect for popping bubbles and getting those really sharp uh, points on if you're dragging dots or making swooshes. My next set of tools are the DIY Mandala Stone. I'm also going to list them in a link below. You can find these on Etsy. The link that I have is an affiliate link to Amazon. It's more for a reference, but you can get them at either place. These are my absolute favorite tools. I use them for every single piece. I don't use them a whole lot in this piece because of the nature of the Arteza paints. I prefer other tools but these are perfect for the larger dots and uh, I definitely highly recommend this set. And the last of the tools that I'm going to be using are the Beauté Galleria. These are actually nail stylists and I'm also linking those below, but these are color coded and I will be referencing each of these and in the description below, I also let you know what tool size that is. So 
Um, I recommend getting a set of these, especially if you follow my work. You might as well just have the set and then have the tools that I use. But these are super great and I will be using these for most of this tutorial. Let's talk about paint. By the way, Arteza, if you're listening, I would love to be sponsored because I love your paints. At the beginning of the video, you're going to see me using some colors that I actually don't mention. That is because I drastically changed course after I started painting this and I wanted to show you guys that even professional artists can screw something up royally and then turn around and turn it into something really special or magnificent. So if you have a project that you're working on and it's not quite turning out right, don't give up. It's okay to change course and redo some of it. So you're going to see that in this video. If you're interested in color theory, I wanted to let you know um, on the color wheel, we're going to be kind of sticking with these colors here. So this is an analogous color palette and all the colors that we're using are going to be on this side of the color wheel today. On to the paint. First, I'm going to start off with the colors of Pearl Magenta, Pearl Raspberry Red, Pearl Hot Pink, Pearl Royal Purple, one of my favorites, Pearl Pink, Pearl Sky Blue, Pearl Rose, Pearl Lilac, and I forgot to show the Pearl Rose Quartz, which I show here. And I'm going to demonstrate the consistency you're wanting to find with dot painting. This is what has really worked for me and with how I create mandala paintings with the Arteza. So you're going to do a 50-50. It's a one-to-one -one pouring medium to Arteza heavy body paint. I always just eyeball it. You can measure it out, but... That's not my style. I'm just kind of looking. I'm going to show you the consistency you're looking for anyway, so make sure you mix it up really well. And I love these little cups. The cups have lasted me the, I don't know, this painting took me about a week to make, so it worked out really nice. So I'm doing the pull test here, and when you pull out the tool, you can see that leveling out there. And you want it to level out pretty pretty smooth in about 10 seconds. If it levels out too fast, it's going to be too thin. But if you have a peak that sticks around, you know it's too thick. So onto the grid. I do the grid a little different on a record. When placing the grid, I only do these little dots in between the intersections. And the reason why I do that is because the record already has the grooves from the music that's on the record and when you use a spray paint those grooves show through really well which I love kind of honoring you know what used to be and what you know people used it for and that becomes your natural guideline so really the dots are there to you know radiate out the shape that you want but the the grooves of the record is also part of your of your guidelines. So I feel like I have a lot of explanations in this video. I started out with a color palette that was different than this one. After I got about 10 layers of dots in, it was it was not turning out. I almost threw it in the garbage. I got so mad at it and I decided to resurrect it and ended up adding a couple of different colors and taking this yellow out and the dark blue that I also you see very briefly in this piece. My goodness, <laughs> it was, it just felt like a clown car after I got to a certain spot with this. So I think it definitely turned out I'm glad I, I changed course. It turned out much better. In this piece, you're going to find me using the nail stylus more than the DIY mandala stone. It's my personal preference. 
over over the DIY mandala stone because of the way it lays the dots down. Like here, I'm using it because I want really flat dots and I just have to smooth these out a little bit. But overall, I prefer really plumpy fat dots and I feel like it's easier to achieve that with a nail stylus with the Arteza paints in particular. Something you must note, popping bubbles is going to be a way of life with the Arteza paints. Instead of getting frustrated with that, you know, just think of it as part of the meditative process of, of popping those bubbles and it's kind of satisfying once you kind of get the hang of it. The easiest way to pop bubbles is to take a really fine tip, kind of like your, if you've got the Pergamano embossing tool, make sure it's dry and it will find the bubble for you and pop it. So you can kind of tell the colors are, I'm trying to make it work here, <laughs> but the colors are just, every time I add a layer, it gets more and more ridiculous to me. I don't know, it's not really my style. Something I love about the metallic colors is when you lay the color down, after they dry, they get really shiny and very metallic-y. Like they're much more metallic than other metallics I have. And they're just, they sparkle, they're stunning. They're, they're just a little bit more beautiful than like other paints that I use. And I love them dearly. Like they have their personality that's all their own. And I think that's partly why I really love them. I do think if you get, get used to or get good at using this paint, it will also become some of your favorites too. I love the little personality of this this drag dot. You're really hugging those three dots there. And so it gives that little bent section in the middle. And it just feels a little more florally than one that's kind of straight. It's a little whimsical. So I'm really sorry about this, but we just skipped right ahead. I guess I forgot to hit the record button. But what you're seeing there the walked dots next to the swooshes that we just put down, those are the royal purple. And the little crocus flowers, the center is the pearl pink, and then the two outside petals are the pearl lilac. So hopefully we can just go in and add those. I will be demonstrating how to achieve that shape, the flower. Also, a little bit later in the in the piece, I duplicate it, so all is not lost. But someday I'm gonna figure out to record every single time. So when I'm painting on a record, I pay attention to where the the natural kind of crevices and grooves are on the record. And if you've done records before, you know they're all, they all seem to be a little bit different. And so you might want to change up the design a little bit to fit that. You can also keep it the same. It's totally up to you. It's your piece, it's your style. I think either way will work just fine. But if you want to copy this piece, just, um, you know, you can, kind of paint over it or um, it shouldn't be that big of an elevation change to um, to follow through with the with the design I love records 
The texture is very smooth, even though you have the grooves here. The texture is super smooth. And you can do these swooshes. Like, to me, this is the easiest thing to do a swoosh on, are these records. And of course, I had to do a lot of them in this piece. So we're gonna be practicing a lot of swooshes today. So this is the shape of the crocus that I kind of came up with. And if you've seen a picture of a crocus, they kind of have, like the top of the flower is a little more fat, like where the petals come out. And then they really kind of pinch down towards the, um, towards the base of the flower. They're really cute flowers. I love them so much. They're dainty. They kind of give this... When you start, you kind of swoop at the top and do this like C shape. And then really tuck that in in the side. I personally like to add another layer of paint once I'm done swooping. And this is going to make your dot, your swooped dot, really nice and plump and smooth. The Arteza paint, you'll probably notice the, the texture is going to show a little more. I like that about these paints. It reflects more light in that way, and I kind of wonder sometimes if that's why it looks a little more radiant, is because it's reflecting more light. So it's just the kind of its own personality, like those big dots that are in the, that, that pink there. You can see how I swirled the paint. I think that's dry, but you can see all the swirls and the texture of it, and I really like it. It just adds another dimension to the painting. I'm so happy happy I got rid of that yellow. <laughs> it was so Okay, I'm gonna let it go. When coming up with this color palette, I wanted to do something that was... So this is for January, and I wanted to do something that was... Still kind of, you know, for the wintry season, but February's coming, and we all know February's like Valentine's. Pink stuff. I'm not really into Valentine's, but I do find that following the seasons really kind of fits. My, what I like to paint and so I felt like this was you know still honoring winter with that sky blue and then also the really pale pinks and purples that really kind of connect the two seasons so you know like Valentine's you're talking about tulips and and daffodils coming up and the crocus are the ones that that pop up first you know it's still winter and those are starting to come up and remind us that it doesn't stay winter forever and that spring will eventually come so that's why I wanted to do that for January especially you can see I'm obsessed with this tool I it's a great practice. This is the perfect piece to practice with your large nail stylus and the Arteza paints because you can load up a dot and make it as large as you want and as puffy as you want. Like, it's the coolest thing. I would say that's like the biggest strength with the paints and these dotting tools. Because I don't think you can really achieve the same with the bottom is flat so it's not transferring as much paint as you could get with the 
ball nail stylus. And when you're loading your stylus up, you're really, I mean, you're scooping it up, so you don't want it to drip off your tool, but you're certainly completely covering the tool. And it transfers a lot of paint that way, especially the large nail stylus. It really does the job nicely. I'm a fan, if you can tell. Another swoop, you guys. I really tried to carry out the idea of a flower with this one. So you've got the stems, you've got the petals of the flower, and also, I don't know, these would be kind of leaf thingies. Like if I really wanted to get detailed into the crocus, those would probably be a little bit thinner, but I really wanted to fill that space in and kind of connect those two sections. So when I'm building up a piece, I'm thinking about the different elements that I'm adding. This is one element. You see I'm really loading that up with this dotting tool. But I'm thinking about this element and then the ones next to it, the actual, the flowers that are next to it, and how I can incorporate the, the two elements together and what those elements are going to look like next to one another. So you're probably not going to find me doing those big dots with the top dots that are right next to each other and this kind of the outer edges because I like the kind of unevenness of it. It kind of helps the eye flow a little bit better. Um, and I probably would do it if Put the dot in the wrong place it's funny i probably would do it intentionally as a design element if it called for it so i'm not gonna say i will never do it but i usually don't it might be fun to do like one dotting tool with all the arteza paints only arteza paints not all of them Maybe all of them. It'd be a good exercise, good practice. These dots with the flower, the crocus, that it kind of almost looks like a crown or a little bit of a royalty with that royal purple, right? This style of tutorial is helpful for you guys. I don't know how else better to do it. I I tend to paint with my gut, like intuition, and I don't know that like just demonstrating and showing you where on the grid I'm placing the dot. I don't. I, I'm not sure. I really need to describe where I'm doing that. I just assume that you guys are kind of pausing and watching where I'm placing that dot and my technique, you know, how I'm dragging the tool, like this instance. Um, I messed up on that one. Did you see that? It's okay to mess up. But, you know, just dropping the dot here and then dragging out two points on each end makes this cute little petal. Or flower. I really, it's cool. And then when you look at a crocus from the top down, that's what it looks like. So I'll get back to my other point in a second, but I wanted to show you guys this part because it's really cool. Like if you look at a crocus, they have these streaks in it. And you're going to dip your tool 
into the rose quartz and just sort of drag it around the flower. You can't re-dip because you're going to get your paint messy. And when you do it this way and create the swirl pattern, just only swirl it around once or twice, just enough to get the color in there or else it's going to start to look muddy. And it creates this really cool texture. So anyway, back to my point about, or my question, is it a question or is it a point? I don't know. Am I doing this right? <laughs> That's my question. Is this helpful? Am I describing it the correct way? I know a lot of you guys know I'm very open about it. I'm autistic and sometimes my communication, especially verbal communication, I really struggle with and I have a hard time sometimes. Like I think something is one way, but it's really not. So maybe there might be something that would be really helpful that I'm just not seeing. So I guess what I'm trying to say is if there is something that would be helpful for you, let me know and I'll see if I can make accommodations for that. I feel like I don't really have a whole lot left to say with this video. The flowers were kind of the highlight and we've gotten through most of it. The rest of it is just sort of filling in the gaps, finishing it off and making it look magical. So if you traveled this far with me, make sure you are part of the Facebook group because it is such a cool group. It is the coolest dotting group on Facebook, if I say so myself. <laughs> Anyways, everybody there is super supportive and I love the fact that you guys um, come and share your work with everybody. It's really, it's really fantastic. It's all levels. You know, we've got people that share techniques and um, tips. I don't know everything. I don't claim to know everything, but it's a great place to ask questions and people you know, between everybody there, we know a lot of stuff. So I'd love for you to come check us out and I'm going to let the music play out and I really appreciate you guys stopping by.
Thank you.